What's up guys? It's Marco from uh, G Outdoors and today I'm going to try to show you how to restore an antler that you might have found in the woods that was either dried up, chewed up. Um, so here's the one. I actually found this one a couple weeks ago and uh, the video is actually on our YouTube page. I'll post a link further down below if you guys want to check it out if you haven't already seen it. And uh, this is the other I'll be working with today. It's all chewed big time over here. All the antlers points are just completely shredded. So what I'm going to use today is basically just simple modeling clay. I know a lot of people like to use a taxidermy putty or something like that, but I just don't have it with me. So I'm going to give this a try. We'll see how it goes. Just some water to keep it nice and moist. Some sand blocks to even it out, I guess. Once you wrap it and you let it dry, if there's any parts of it you don't want, you can just sand it out, keep it nice and flush. A couple of paint brushes to change up the color. Just a paint tray. <clears throat> a lacquer thinner. Just a simple, regular lacquer thinner. A tin pot, galvanized to keep it in it. And then a couple paints. I decided to use silver, white to give it a, a gray once you mix it, and burnt umber for the bases and uh, <clears throat> the brows basically. So uh, first we'll start off, we're going to use the modeling clay. Alright guys, I got the putty here, ready to go. I'm going to start by trying to fill in this little crater over here that the uh, squirrels or rodents got to. So we'll start with that and then I'll work my way to the tines. Roll it up. Try to get the right size for it. Now it says it's, it's well obviously you can see here it's super brown. But they say once it dries up it's going to turn white. Hopefully it does. If not, it's not a problem. I have the paints here anyways to change it up. So we'll see how that goes. get it nice in there squeeze it as much as we can if there's any problems afterwards like I said I have the sander pull the sanding blocks that could do the trick use some water if you need to just to get it in there try to get a flush need some more get that in there There you go, you can see it's starting to fill in. Yeah, just a bit more. Got my buddy here today. Watch out. It's starting to fill in nice. Use a bit more water. Already that's looking much better. You can already see it's already filled in right now. I'm not sure how the lighting is, but uh, get out of here. Curious little guy. All right. Now, <clears throat> while I'm going to let this dry, I'll start doing the tines on top. Just a little piece goes a long way over here. Not much got chewed, but I want to try to make it as realistic as possible. Like that. Get some water in. You want to blend it into the actual antler. Just a bit. Just like that. It's starting to take shape. That's what we want. If you feel there's too much on the antler, just grab some water with your fingers and go upwards and you kind of push it up, form it and remove whatever you don't want. Now the brow tine. The brow tine, not much got done to it except for the sides, so I'm just going to try to fill it in there like so. 
Once again, grab water if you need. Push it up. Just like that. Take a look. One last point. The last one. Get some water. Alright guys, so now I kind of finished up quickly, I'm just putting all the mold. If you don't like any points, like I said before, you could always add water. So this is what we have. It's starting to look, coming back together. Take a 360 look around it, you never know the back point if it's not how you like. You fix it up now. There you go. Starting to look better. There you go. So now you just let it dry. You can let it air dry, but uh, I'm gonna try to speed up the process. So I'll go grab the blow dryer, keep it on cool, cause I'm not quite sure what it would do on, on uh, if you put the heat. So I'll just let it stay on cool, quickly air dry it, see if it changes color, if it does change white. And uh, we'll begin starting to stain and uh, paint. Stay tuned. Alright guys, <clears throat> as you can see here, it's still pretty dark, but everything seems to be drying up, which is good. There has been a little bit of cracks, but you just go over that with your finger and it should smooth back in. Plus with the paint afterwards that we're going to put on it, it shouldn't be a problem. If you don't like any of the points, you can still try to fix them before they completely dry up. But as you can see, it's starting to get more like an antler, just like that. <clears throat> but uh, so now we're gonna go ahead and start putting the, the base, which is gonna be a mix of the silver morning and the white. So inside your paint tray, you're just gonna put a bit in a bit and blend it in together with the lacquer thinner. So let's go ahead and do that. The reason why I chose a tin is because last time I was unaware that uh, the lacquer thinner, I put it in, the, uh, in a styrofoam bowl and that just completely disintegrated. Uh, it looked pretty cool, but it was uh, highly ineffective. So use any sort of hard plastic or tin metal, it should be fine. So let's go ahead. Just a bit. There you go. Perfect. Now we have our white and gray. We're going to begin that. These are acrylic paints, so they're easy to come off, especially with the lacquer thinner. If ever you have, it's too strong, you could just put another coat of lacquer. It's going to thin it right up. It's going to almost remove it. So you're just going to mix that together a bit with the paintbrush and the lacquer thinner. So dip your paintbrush in the lacquer thinner and just sort of intertwine both as you can see here if you feel you need a bit more lacquer go right ahead just integrate both to give it a lighter gray and then you can begin applying it to the outer This is going on pretty strong, so I'm just going to add a bit more lacquer once I get there to the tops. Just remove some of the excess. And this is just the base, it's going to go on nice, it's going to give it more of a bony look. Mm -hmm. 
as you can see it's got more of a natural look than the white it's I don't know how it looks in the camera <clears throat> but I'm just gonna add one more thin layer of lacquer thinner and we'll let it dry for a bit all right guys we're back it's a couple minutes later it's still a bit wet but as you can see it's drying up nicely it's starting to get that that full bone look it's starting to get that little silver streaks the old antler used to have which is pretty pretty nice the characteristics are starting to come back so now we're just going to go ahead and put some burnt umber in the tray and begin putting the bases and stuff like that. If you guys have an old handler that you like, that you want to use as a reference, go right ahead. But here you go. That's how it looks. So let's begin. And begin with the bases. If you see it gets too strong, if there's too much brown, go right ahead and add the lacquer. Don't be scared. If ever you remove too much, you can always add more after. So that's a good thing. I just went to go get one of the others I found a couple weeks ago just to give me a reference. Just to see how where the brown stops, how it goes in. Etc. Etc. So I'm going to continue that now with this other. Sometimes to get the little effects of the uh, the base where the burrs are, I like to just stick the paintbrush directly in it and try to stab the horn, and it gives it that choppy look, like so. And it gets nice in there. What I'm going to do now, while the paint's still drying, I'm going to put a final touch on a lacquer thinner just on the base. And with a knife, I'm just going to go down through it and make the lines kind of look realistic, like this end one over here. Kind of look like all lines. It's really tough to see. But that's how a natural antler was. So I'm gonna to try to get that same effect with a knife. You just go through it. So just like that. There you go. It's tough to tell. It's really hard to see actually, but that's how it is so far. Just let it keep drying and we'll be back soon guys. I just gave the second coat of the white with the silver to give it the grayish look. Looks pretty shiny right now, but we're just gonna let that dry. The brown is starting to come in. So <clears throat> I'll be back soon. Now I'm just gonna show you it's still drying, but this is the finishing touch of what the antler looks like now. Let's see here. Darker at the bases, kind of fades in to the white. And that's pretty much how it's gonna be. You could do it however you want. No antler is the same, but this is just the, the way I kind of do it. And once again, it was just simply modeling clay, sanding blocks to edge out the sides once if there's too much clay some white, silver, burnt umber, acrylics, and then I just had the lacquer thinner in a pot. And that was pretty much it. And I think it came out pretty good. If ever I see within the next couple of days when it fully dries, there's any changes to it, I'll be sure to do it. But that's uh, pretty much it. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to leave it at the bottom of the box and I'll post the links 
for our YouTube page at the bottom if you guys want to check out where we found these antlers and other videos of our big finds. Anyways guys, stay tuned. Thanks for watching. watching.